global governance versus nationalism. Um, question here from Phil Dennis: how, how do we get people, governments, to relinquish power? Is that is that? Uh, especially the text is there is so big I can't mm -hmm. even read the full question. But is, is that uh, uh, is that a necessity? Is it going to take war to get there? I mean, one Sorry, Phil, I mangled your question, but uh, I blame the text right here. <laughs> one option that some people talk about is that um, only a catastrophe can shake humankind and uh, open the, the path to a real system of global governance. And they say that we can't do it before the catastrophe, but we need to start laying the foundations so yeah. that when the disasters strike, we can react quickly. Uh, but people will just not have the motivation to do such a thing before the disaster strikes. Um, another thing that I would emphasize is that anybody who is really interested in global governance should always make it very, very clear that it doesn't replace or abolish uh, local identities and communities. That it should come both at the same. It should be part of of, of, a, of a single package. Ah. No, so this, this is really. I, I want to hear more on this because the, the very words "global governance" are kind of are almost the epitome of evil in, in, the, in the mindset of a, of, a, of a lot of people on the alt-right right now. Mm -hmm. you know, it just seems scary, remote, distant, and yes. it has let them down. And so, global, globalists, global governance, no, go away. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and many view the election as the ultimate sort of poke in the eye to anyone who believes in that. Mm -hmm. So, so how, how do we change the narrative so that it doesn't seem so scary and remote? B build more on this idea of, of it being compatible with, with local identity, local communities. Well, I think we, sh we should, again, we should start really with the biological realities of, of Homo sapiens. Um, and biology tells us two things about Homo sapiens which are very relevant to this issue. First of all, that we are completely dependent on the ecological system around us, and that today, we are talking about a global system, you cannot escape that. And at the same time, biology tells us about Homo sapiens, that we are social animals, but that we are social on a very, very local level. Uh, it's just a simple fact of, of humanity that we cannot have uh, intimate familiarity with more than about 150 individuals. Mm. The, uh, the size of the natural group, the natural community of Homo sapiens uh, is not more than 150 individuals. And everything beyond that is really based on all kinds of imaginary stories and large-scale institutions. And I, I think that we can find a way, uh, again, based on a biological understanding of our species, to weave the two together and to understand that today, in the 21st century, we need both the global level and the local community. And I would go even further than that and say that it starts with, with the body itself. Mm. The feelings that people today have of alienation and loneliness and not finding their, their, their place in the world, I, I, I would think that the chief problem is not global capitalism, the chief problem is that over the last hundred years, people have been becoming disembodied, mm. have been distancing themselves from their body. Uh, as a hunter-gatherer or even as a peasant, to, to survive, you need to be constantly in touch with your body and with your senses every moment. If you go to the forest to look for mushrooms and you don't pay attention to what you hear, to what you smell, to what you taste, you're dead. So you must be very connected. Uh, in the last hundred years, people are losing their ability to be in touch with their body and their senses, to hear, to smell, to feel. More and more attention goes to screens, to what is happening elsewhere some other time. This, I think, is the deep reason for the feelings of alienation and loneliness mm. and so forth. Um, and therefore, part of the solution is not to bring back some mass nationalism, but also to reconnect with our own bodies. And mm. if you're back in touch with your body, you'll feel much more at home in the world also. Well, depending on how things go, we may all be back in the forest soon. <laughs> we'll see. We're going to have one more question in the room, 